Hey guys, welcome back. Now in this lecture, let us talk about the most important thing regarding our bubble sort, which is its complexity. So in simple words, it's n square. And whenever someone directly asks you what is the complexity of bubble sort, just say n square. Now remember the important part. We always talk about the worst case scenario. So there are three cases, best case, average and worst. Let me discuss more about this in few minutes. So at currently, if I talk about the complexity of bubble sort, it's n square. Why? Because we have n number of input and we are iterating n number of times. So it's as simple as that. So the simplest way to understand is counting the loops. So if we are taking two loops, which is the nested one, then the complexity will depend on them because the work done and the comparison done are dependent on these loop itself. So we need to take care of these four loops. We have currently two loops. So we are going to take complexity n by n. Now with this type of answer, there are chances that you are not convinced. So let us talk about the mathematical way by which we can find out the complexity. So let me talk about the first iteration cycle when we have n element, the number of comparisons were 4. So in terms of n, it was n minus 1. With our iteration cycle second, we had 3 comparison which is n minus 2. With our third iteration cycle, we have n minus 3. And with our fourth iteration cycle, we have n minus 4. So if you generalize this pattern, it was n minus 1, then n minus 2, then n minus 3 and then keep on following. So it's actually a mathematical series, which turn out to be n into n minus one by two. Now, if you generalize this one, it will be n square by two minus n by two. And if you remember our previous concept, we remove the constant and keep the biggest term, which is n square. So it's not exactly the n square, but when we talk about the large numbers, maybe 500, 1000, million, then all the other constant values are too small to compare. So that's why we take the worst case scenario and we are taking n square. So complexity is basically the work we are doing and which is the comparisons. Now, if I talk about the worst case, best case and average case, so it's simple. Worst case is when none of the element is sorted. So basically we have descending order of input and we need to do it in ascending order. So you can understand the number of swaps that we are doing at this case is too high. If I talk about the best case, that means the list is already sorted. We don't have to do anything with our first iteration itself. We don't have anything to swap. Now the average case is something which is not the best one, which is not the worst one, which is in between. So with this one, we usually tends towards the n square one. I hope with this mathematical proof, you are able to understand the complexity of bubble sort. In the next lecture, let us talk about our second algorithm and start working on it. Thank you for following. See you in the next one.